interesting facts about famous people. Fastest actors with a gun in westerns. Who was really the fastest actor with a gun in westerns? I've searched the web. I don't have a definitive rated list. This video is assembled from various comments online, some hearsay and rumour. These entries are based on witnesses, not comparisons. So no documentation or video of actual witnessed draws. So not ranked. Let me know what you think and who was missed. If you enjoy this video, hit the notification button to get my new videos. If you want to check out my many other videos, head over to my channel. The link is in the description. Let's get into it. Alan Ladd. Rod Wedwing was a Chickasaw Indian who started in Hollywood with Cecil B. DeMille in 1931 and was an outstanding exhibition shooter in the style of Annie Oakley and Ed McGiven. Redwing taught Alan Ladd for the classic 1953 western Shane. Some of his western roles were Red Mountain 1951, Shane 1953, The Big Land 1957, Guns of the Timberland 1960, One Foot in Hell 1960. Arvo Ajalo. Ajalo was the genuine article. To those he tutored, his speed was clocked and verified a number of times. He could draw, fire and hit the target in one sixth of a second, faster than the eye can blink. His technique of cocking in his holster as he drew revolutionized the Western and was shown in detail both by Henry Fonda in the Western film The Tin Star and by John Payne in his series The Restless Gun. At the height of the TV westerns, Ajala opened a quick draw studio on the 8500 block of the Sunset Strip, next to the famous King Cellar Liquor Store. Among the TV and film stars that Ajala taught to shoot included James Arness, Robert Culp, James Garner, Kevin Klein, Paul Newman, Hugh O'Brien, Clint Walker, Marilyn Monroe, and Thomas F. Wilson. Audie Murphy was an American soldier, actor, and songwriter. He was one of the most decorated American combat soldiers of World War II. He received every military combat award for valor available from the United States Army, as well as French and Belgian awards for heroism. Murphy received the Medal of Honor for valor that he demonstrated at the age of 19 for single-handedly holding off a company of German soldiers for an hour at the Colmar Pocket in France. In January 1945, before leading a successful counter-attack while wounded and out of ammunition. With 34 credited westerns, I won't list them all here, just a few. I will make another video on just his westerns soon, so hit the notification button and subscribe to see it when it comes up. No Name on the Bullet, 1959. 40 Guns to Apache Pass, 1967. Bullet for a Bad Man, 1964. The Quick Gun, 1964. The Unforgiven, 1960. Night Passage, 1957. Ride Clear of Diablo, 1954. Gene Wilder, Blazing Saddles, 1974. Gene Wilder and Cleveland Little, quickly became friends on set. Since Little was a Broadway actor, Wilder would give him pointers for acting in front of the cameras. Gene Wilder said of the film, they've smashed racism in the face, but they're doing it while you laugh. The movie premiered at Pickwick Drive-In Theatre in Burbank. 250 invited guests, including Cleveland Little and Gene Wilder, rode horses to the event and watched the film on horseback. The Frisco Kid, 1979, Marketing for the film heavily emphasised Gene Wilder's role in the film, with little marketing of Harrison Ford's supporting role. Despite Ford having been in the blockbuster Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope, 1977, two years earlier. When the Frisco Kid was released on DVD, the cover was a blow-up of Ford's face, with Wilder relegated to a small corner of the cover. In his autobiography, 
Gene Wilder said that John Wayne was offered the part that was eventually played by Harrison Ford. Wayne loved the role and was eager to work with Wilder. However, an agent tried to offer Wayne less than his usual fee and the legendary actor turned the film down. Glenn Ford. Rod Wedwing was a Chickasaw Indian who started in Hollywood with Cecil B. DeMille in 1931 and was an outstanding exhibition shooter in the style of Annie Oakley and Ed McGiven. Red Wing taught Glenn Ford for the 1956 film The Fastest Gun Alive, even faster than Avro Ajalo. With 27 credited westerns, I won't list them all here, just a few. I will make a new video on just his westerns soon. So hit the notification button and subscribe to see it when it comes up. The Fastest Gun Alive, 1956. Jubal, 1957. 310 to Yuma, 1957. Cowboy, 1958. The Sheepman, 1958. Cimarron, 1960. J. Silverheels, also rumoured to be one of the fastest draws, adopted the nickname Silverheels during a very brief boxing career, which saw him compete as a middleweight in a Golden Glove spout in New York City's Madison Square Garden. Inducted into the Hall of Great Western Performers of the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in 1993. With way too many credited westerns, I won't list them all here, just a few. I will make a new video on just his westerns soon. So hit the notification button and subscribe to see it when it comes up. The Lone Ranger, 1956. Walk the Proud Land, 1956. Alias Jesse James, 1959. In Pursuit of Treasure, 1972. One Little Indian, 1973. The Man Who Loved Cat Dancing, 1973. Jerry Lewis. I know this one is a bit unexpected, but rumoured to be one of the fastest with a six-shooter. His only Western was with Dean Martin, Partners, 1956. Sons of former ranch partner, Lewis, raised by his millionaire mother, follows Martin back to the West to learn how to be a cowboy. The ranch where Martin is foreman is in financial strife, and with Lewis's help, they went out. The same day this film was released to theatres, Martin and Lewis made their last appearance together as a team at New York's Coco Cabana, Dean Martin's first Western. Kirk Douglas, likely not too much of a surprise to anyone, also said to be quick with a gun. With 18 credited Westerns, I won't list them all here, just a few. I will make a new video on just his Westerns soon. So hit the notification button and subscribe to see it when it comes up. Along the Great Divide, 1951. Gunfight at the OK Corral, 1957. I don't want to kill the Way you, West, right? 1967. The War Wagon, 1967. A Gunfight, 1971. Draw, 1984. Lee Van Cleef. I guess working with guns as his day job, it's not too surprising he became skilled with the tools of his trade. For his film debut, he appeared solo in the opening pre-title shots of the classic High Noon, 1952. It would be the first of many bad guys he would portray in westerns. He was heterochromatic, with one eye being blue and the other green. He had almost given up on his acting career in the mid-60s and turned to painting when he was cast by Sergio Leone in For a Few Dollars More, 1965. It made him a superstar in Europe and restarted his career in the US, making him again a recognisable and bankable name. With 51 credited westerns, I won't list them all here, just a few. I will make a new video on just his westerns soon, so hit the notification button and subscribe to see it when it comes up. Treasure of Ruby Hills, 1955. Raiders of Old California, 1957. For a few dollars more, 1965. The Big Gun Down, 1967. 
The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, 1966. Man. Death Rides a Horse, 1967. I blame my men, boy. Sammy Davis Jr. According to the fastest gun who ever lived, Bob Munden, Davis was the second fastest draw in Hollywood, trailing only Jerry Lewis. Davis presented Munden with a customised Colt Peacemaker in recognition of Munden's skill after they appeared together on The Mike Douglas Show, 1961. His Western roles were in Sergeants 3, 1962, The Rifleman, 1962, Lawman, 1962. Thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate likes and subscribers. Hit the notification bell to get my new videos. Take a look at my channel. The link's in the description. Bye for now. See you again soon. Interesting facts about famous people.